Stand there for the sake of Allah. Stand there for the sake of Allah in the middle of the night. This is your true business. Your business for the Akhirah, day and night. Make sure you take time out on the day for the Quran. Make sure you sit down with your children to remind them of Allah. To remind them of Allah's statements. And so on and so forth. You must make sure that this dunya doesn't get you involved. That your heart doesn't get shaked up by this, by this fitna. I want to make, I want to go on with the topic, the second type of shahawat, the second type of fitna is the fitna of doubt. And I don't know of any time where the fitna of these doubts has been so much as in our times, especially on the internet. Everyone is speaking about the religion of Allah and causing doubts about the religion of Allah in a very well laid out plan staged by stage it is as if it's a war against Islam by establishing doubts against Islam sometimes sometimes they start to put doubts upon the Sahaba themselves the ones who carry to us this religion because they carry the Quran and Sunnah they, they start putting doubts about, about the Sahaba but if you cause doubts about the Sahaba then you cause doubts about the religion of Islam because they are the ones that carry this religion to us by destroying the Sahaba you destroy the Quran and the Sunnah because they are the ones that carry the Quran and Sunnah to us may Allah reward all of them and forgive all of them if you see any person trying to belittle one of the Sahaba of the Prophet then know that he is trying to destroy the religion of Islam this is because the Prophet is true He's asking you to say salat whenever you mention the Prophet's name, say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, when you see a man trying to belittle any one of the Prophet's companions, then know that he is trying to destroy the religion of Islam. This is because, this is after Abu Zura speaking, this is because the Prophet is true, and what he came with from Allah is true. And the people who carry to us are the Sahaba. So they try to destroy. They try to destroy the Sahaba because this will lead to the destruction of the Quran and Sunnah. One of the filthy one of them said in a very evil book that he had, and one of the Muslim newspapers carried this book and printed it. Totally. This filthy person said that the Sahaba that the Sahaba are an example of people that were involved in a backward nation and a sexual, sexually licentious society at that time. And then he said, when the man met the woman and the woman met the women every single day, in a regular interval, in Yathrib, then when this came so much that the men had so much intercourse with the women and vice versa, this is when Muhammad وسلم, allowed the men to enter the masjid when they were junub. So he is trying to show some doubt about the Sahaba that they were very sexual in their nature. He said, look at how evil this man is to say these type of things. That they were trying to cause doubts about the Sahaba. And then they went to another place. Trying to cause doubts about the Sunnah itself. About the Sunnah itself, they're trying to cause doubts. Some of them have denied the intercession of the Prophet. Some of them have denied the punishment of the grave. Some of them have denied the blessings of the grave. Some of them have even said, "We don't even have to follow the Sunnah. It's not a part of our. It's not a part of our religion. We just have to follow the Quran." And they said, Allah says in the Quran, we have not left anything out of this book. So they're trying to prove that the Sunnah is not a part of the Quran. So ask one of them to open the Quran 
from Fatiha to Nas and then teach us how to pray without looking at the Sunnah. Ask one of these people that denies the, the Sunnah to teach us how to pray. Bring me one verse in the whole Quran from Fatiha to Nas that tells me that Isha is four rak'ah and that you have to pray in this specific manner and that the pillars of Hajj are like this and the Sunnahs of Hajj are like this and the things that break Hajj are like this. Bring me even one verse that brings all of these questions. You will not be able to find a thing verse. Rather, you will find the one that will explain this all is the Prophet himself in the Sunnah. The one who believes the Sunnah, he will come and say, quote you the Hadith, pray as the Prophet prayed. He will come and say the Prophet and did Hajj in this manner. The one who believes in the Sunnah, he will be able to show you how to do Hajj and how to do Islam. Allah says in the Quran, this is a book that we have revealed to you so that you can take people from the darkness into the light and show them the clear path. So the Quran has shown the broad outlines of Islam, but it has left the details of the religion, it has left the details of it to the Prophet wasallam. So they start causing doubts about the Sunnah and they say that we don't have to follow the Sunnah. They can then reach a very dangerous position. Look at the doubts that they're causing. They will then reach a third position. Those who have caused doubts about the Sunnah, they will then say causing doubts about the Quran itself. Have they caused doubts about the Quran? Yes, indeed they have. What is your proof that they have caused doubts about the Qur'an? One of these people, the major one of them, he is living in the religion, of, uh, in the land of the Muslims. And the Sheikh says, I know exactly what I'm saying. He says, By the way, the Egyptian government has claimed that he was a non-Muslim eventually. He said that the Qur'an is a human product, it's not a divine product. And the aqeedah of the Qur'an is based upon the stories that were prevalent at that time. And he is making fun of it and he says that our religion is based on the Qur'an that is in the Lawh Al-Mahfuz on a very literal understanding of the Qur'an and we still think that there is a God on a throne and we still think that there is going to be a punishment and a heaven and a hell and we're going to cross over the, the grave to the end of what he said one of the deans said that the Qur'an is open for criticism just like any other book of, of literature is. And he said the existence of Ibrahim and Ismail is something that has been doubted. And even if the Torah and the Injil and the Qur'an all mention Ibrahim and Ismail, we don't have to believe in them. These are dangerous doubts that he is bringing forth about the Qur'an. To then, bring, to then go to their final goal. And that is to deny the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A certain person mentioned, he said, Allah is in my city, he is sold by the Jews. Allah is dead and the helpers are back now. He's talking about a philosopher, an Arab philosopher. That is, God is being sold by the religion people and the, and the other people buy them from the religious crowd. I don't know of any place and any time where the doubts have been spread forth so much as in our times. And what is the way out? The way out from all of these fitan, the fitan of doubts and the fitan of desires, both. We will talk about them, inshallah.